fossil record of eukaryotes is becoming better known every day. Our earliest record is that of sterines formed from cholesterols, a steroid unique to eukaryotes. As we have seen, there have been numerous claims and counterclaims, particularly about whether sterines come from machine oil and drilling equipment, or are actually the same age as the rocks. At the moment, while Australian biomarker claims have been shown to be likely contamination, South African sediments remain in contention for having eukaryotic biomarkers. By 1.5 billion years ago, we have something called Grapania. This is a pretty big comma or spiral shaped organic compression fossil known from Montana and China. It's hard to miss Grapania since the commas are up to 13 millimeters long and 2 millimeters wide. A little younger than this, at 1.8 billion, we find the first acrotarchs. These are simple, large, crushed bags with a split in them and are called laospherids. They could be eukaryotes, but could also be prokaryotes too. They're made out of sporopollenin and hence are probably eukaryotes, but they have so few distinctive features that there is some doubt about their taxonomic grouping. By 1.5 billion years ago, we start to get good fossils. For instance, the Roper group shales in Australia have excellent preservation of cyanobacteria. Since little dinking things like cyanobacteria are well preserved, it would be surprising not to find eukaryotes if they were also present. Indeed, there are large compressed spheres like the acrotarchs mentioned earlier. These spheres tend to be big, but unexceptional in terms of ornamentation. That would be disappointing, but fortunately Roper group mud rocks also have acrotarchs like Tapania. This is very clearly a eukaryote with processes and spines on the outside of a vegetative-like cell wall. In addition, in scattered places around the world, there are large helical impressions, more than five centimeters wide, and also strings of beads. We don't know what they are, but they're definitely biological, and they have to be eukaryotes based on their size. After 1.5 billion years ago, the fossils start to come hot and heavy. By 1.2 billion years, there are cherts on Somerset Island in Arctic Canada that contain really well-preserved red algal filaments. This tells us that red and green algae separated from each other more than 1.2 billion years ago. There have also been previous reports of phosphatized strands of red algae from 1.6 billion year old rocks in India by Bankston in 2009. By a billion years ago, the Laconda formation in Siberia contained simple branching filaments of heteroconch algae. Heteroconch algae are like kelp and diatoms that have mobile uh, reproductive stages with two types of flagella. In other words, these have a complex life cycle, another eukaryotic trait. Finally, by 800 to 700 million years ago, there are shales in the Grand Canyon, and also on Spitsbergen, containing really beautiful green algae. The Grand Canyon rocks also contain vase-shaped testate amoebas. So, in summary, the fossil record of eukaryotes starts with sterines that say that eukaryotes were around, but are not very specific about what kinds of beasts these were. Then we get these simple bags constituting the first acrotarchs, and a bit later complex acrotarchs that clearly indicate a mobile cell with a cytoskeleton. There are relatively big eukaryotic compression fossils that are big enough to likely have multiple types of cells and branching cell division. Finally, by 1.5 billion years ago, the fossils grow in number, including red algae, that as we will see, have a history of swallowing all manner of bacteria and each other in a bid to develop new ways of making a living.